so glad you could join us today. Today we're talking about something that I have a real love-hate relationship with. Yep, homeschool planning. How about you? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you avoid it at all costs? Well, let me tell you my story. When I first started homeschooling, I thought I needed to create serious plans for every little thing that we did in our homeschool. You know, I had just stepped out of the role of classroom teacher and moved into homeschooling for children at the time. Of course, that up to six pretty soon. But in all of that, I thought I had to have this huge detailed plan. And you know what? I about drove myself crazy that year. I realized that that huge plan was making me insane because I could never follow through on everything or kids didn't cover everything. We'd have to scratch it and do something different the next week. And so I was constantly changing that plan and it made me crazy. So my bright idea, the next year I decided to throw planning out the window and I pendulum swung and the pendulum swung right off into oblivion because that is exactly what my plan was. It was non-existent that second year. And even worse than the first year with the crazy plan, that second year, I just, I can't even begin to describe it completely. It was insane. It was a mess. Probably the worst failure year in the history of our homeschool. So red letter year for us, but definitely was was a mess it was bad and so if i learned anything from that was that i needed a plan for our homeschool i don't know if that's your experience or not or where you stand with homeschool planning but that's my story and so with that in mind i feel the necessity to have a homeschool plan in place every year but i didn't want to have a crazy plan like I did the first year and I didn't want to have no plan so I needed to find a balance something that was simple and straightforward that made sense but didn't take me forever because on my word I have six children I have so much going on plus I work no I didn't have time for it so I went back to my teacher training and I looked at all of that good stuff solid educational process and best practices and I streamlined um, what I used to do. <laughs> and so what I came up with was a pretty straightforward, very simplified plan for my homeschool year. All right. So with that, I always, uh, I always encourage new homeschoolers, especially if they haven't done it already to sit down and with their husband, their children even, and work through your big why. Why are you homeschooling? What is your purpose? And this is this is the fundamental reason why your homeschool exists, why you're doing this thing. <laughs> and so once you've established your big why, then you need to think through how you're going to accomplish that. And that really boils down to your homeschool method, how your philosophy of homeschool, how are you going to teach your children? And believe it or not, as many as there are unique people and unique homeschools, there are unique philosophies. Um, sometimes people have one pure philosophy or method that they use. Sometimes it's a mix or combination. And from and most of the time, it's it really is a com combination of a few different philosophies that really work together to fit our particular homeschool. So of course, that's where I landed in this mix. But once I got my why established, my how set in place, I was able to use those two things to direct me in establishing my yearly plans every year. And so that's the other nice thing. Once you've got your why and your how, then you can you can have that. You can hang on to that year after year unless, of course, you have some sort of cataclysmic change in your homeschool and you want to swap out. Um, but typically from year to year, those things don't change. So you have that basic foundation to start your plan every year. All right, and so when you get into your yearly plan, your new plan for the beginning of homeschool this year, I always start, step one, with my goals. And to keep this simple, like I said I would, um, it basically boils down to just a course list. So what do my children need to study this year? And what do they want to study? 
So there, you need to always have a little bit of both there, you know, some, some guided learning, you know, you've got to have this, of course, there's math and, and some writing, grammar and literature, but then what do they want to learn? And we should encourage that. So establish that, make you a course list. And then from there, step two, we want to take and build your homeschool yearly calendar. So really you can't create a plan without knowing what you're gonna do when. All right, so you have your calendar and I keep that simple too. I either use notebook paper and have um, 12 different pages or you can take a sheet of paper if you wanna just keep it real little and divide it into 12 squares or you can, um, you can actually use the yearly plan sheet in our Sanity Saver Planner, which is really cool. It's got nice little boxes spread out for your yearly plan in the different months. So you take that and you plan out your year by writing down any birthdays, any holidays, any times off, um, times that you are not going to school. So for example, if you decide to do a four day homeschool week, make sure you incorporate that. So maybe having you know one day a week off. And then plan by taking, you know, if you homeschool year round, great, simple. If you don't homeschool normally, like you do during the school term during the summer, you want to exclude that as well. So all of those things should be laid out in your calendar. So basically January, what days are we going to homeschool? What days are we taking off? February the same. All right, so you've got that laid out. You know your basic schedule your calendar for this homeschool year so from there oh one more thing before i move on make sure that if your state requires that you have 180 days now is the time to build that into your homeschool calendar for the year and make sure that you have your necessary 180 school days um okay so step three I usually begin this step once I have all of my uh, books, unit studies, and courses of study that we're gonna be using that year. So I've, I've made my list, I know what we wanna study, what we need to study, and I've ordered it. It's come in, or I've checked it out from the library, whatever you, you do. You've got it there with you because you're gonna to need to refer to it you know, in person. So have it all right there ready for you to look at. And if any of your courses of study have pre-made plans, now is the time to use those. They will help you expedite this process. And there's nothing wrong with using a pre-made plan. You just make it fit your schedule and work for you. It's great, it saves you time. So I start having all my resources and then I take that yearly, the yearly plan is there as well, but then I take four pages for my quarters. Okay, so I can write on four pieces of notebook paper, or I can use the quarterly plan, four sheets of the quarterly plan from our Sanity Saver planner. And I've got that there, and I will simply write out, okay, what my what are my goals for each quarter? Now, I divide the time that we are actually going to be homeschooling. So if I exclude my summers and we do something different, like work on things that we struggled with during the summer, that's excluded from this. So I divide that time that we will actually be working on these courses of study into four groups. And then each group typically when I do this comes out to about two and a half months. I take that and each, each one of my quarter pages is worth two and a half months. So I look at my books, I look at my resources and I divide all the content we want to cover for the year into four sections. And I write that on the quarterly plan page as a list simple. All right. It's not crazy. It's not a bunch of detail. It's a list. So it may look like um, chapter five, chapter seven, chapter nine for science for this quarter, or maybe for literature, it's this unit and this unit, or maybe in another subject, we are reading two or three books. Okay. So it's, it's a list. It's not a bunch of detail. It's just a simple list. All right, keeps me going nice and simple. All right, so step four, I take those four quarters and then I divide down into months. Okay, so now I'm just gonna make a month list. Okay, so we went from a quarter list down to a month list. Super simple. So we're gonna list out main topics to study for that month. All right, 
So in my month list, I'll take, for example, I just mentioned, perhaps my quarterly list had three or four different chapters. Well, I'm gonna take that content that I needed to cover in that quarter, divide it down into how many months, two and a half months, whatever. That will, that will mean that for one month, I will cover this chapter and this chapter as support or part of that particular quarter. Very simple again, so it's just a list. So we're, we are taking the whole year worth of study, dividing it into four groups, four quarters, making a list. Then we're taking that quarter and dividing it into months and making a list for the month. And all of these I simply write down and I keep them in my planner binder. Very simple, 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 simple streamlined list. All right, but just having that list helps me refer back. It's my goal, it's my target. I'm gonna cover this in this month. Nice and simple. All right, so step five. Now from step five, this is where I leave my big plan. I'm pretty much done here with the big, with the big planning, with the, you know, all that good stuff. So at step five, I move into the weekly side. And with this, um, as I mentioned before, I was super, super, super planner that first year. And so with all of that in mind, I made myself crazy because I would plan out weeks in advance and then they change. I'd have to erase whole weeks or rip them out and start over. It was nuts. So I don't do my weekly plans until the weekend before, sometimes maybe Monday morning. <laughs> so I'm very, very current, very up to date with what's going to happen that week. And so if there's a day we can't homeschool, it works out great. I can just adjust the plan. And if there are things that we need to review and do over that we didn't cover and do well from the week before, we have that opportunity to get those in the plan without me erasing and changing and doing it all over again and being crazy because my plan didn't work. All right, so I don't do it in advance. I make it simple as well. So my weekly plan is, again, another list. Super simple. It's pretty much like a to-do list for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for me. And so my to-do list looks like chapter five, page 32 through 37. Yeah, that really doesn't line up, but anyway, you get the idea. All right, so it's basic guidelines to help me know where the kids should be. Maybe I'm just putting down lesson four, five, and six for this week. And then next week, you know, it'll be a continuation from that point. But it's very simple. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. There's not a whole lot of detail. There's not hours and hours of writing involved in this. All right, so step six moves from the mainly for me and my goals and keeping us on target to for the kids. And it's kind of a trickle down effect. So I take my weekly plan and I make a check sheet for each of the kids. It's that simple. And even the check sheet, I try to keep really simple because if there's any instruction that needs to be done we'll do that or they may use an online video or something like that so it's, a, it's again very simple there and so with the check sheet i can make their list monday through thursday or friday depending on your weekly schedule and the kids can go through and check off monday when they've completed this 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 and that <laughs> um using the check sheet has always worked really great for our home because every one of us works well with having a checklist something to check off feeling that accomplishment of oh i checked it off i am done for today um so it's it's just some it's just how we operate you may be different but it works very well for us and our family and so it's another thing that I kind of found out by trial and error. Uh, I would try to force my kids to do all, all kinds of different things and finally discovered the check sheet and how well they did with it. And it's been great ever since. So we won't look back on that one. But anyway, it's, it's completely a bare bone list, checklist for them to make sure they cover all their target goals for the week. All right, so there it is, exposed done that's my personal planning process and um you know it is it is pretty simple it is very bare bones and and some people might think that it's just not enough detail but it works well for us um and it's helped keep us going and on target for many years so anyway 
how do you plan? What are your goals? What are your thoughts for this coming year? If you want to share, I'd love to hear from you. You can message me on Instagram or Facebook or email me at jamie.gaddy at homeschoolconnect.com. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful week with grace and joy. Jamie.